first step is to load the shot and the powder. I'm using High Gun from Hodgson. I have a special funnel that helps to, that hooks onto the bottle. Regular funnel, some people use regular funnel. I just pour the shot, the powder straight in. I don't know how much I'll need, but after I'm finished, I can put the powder back in the jar. Take off the funnel and make sure that the stopper is back in. Put my powder over. The second part is the shot. I use a small small bowl to pour the shot in. Makes it a little bit easier to put the shot in. Take the shot bottle, screw it in. Take the lid off. Chalk comes in these 25 bags, or it's a little bit awkward to handle. I would take pour. That is probably enough shot for my project today. Put the funnel on the shot bottle. Make sure the shot bottle is tightened. the pallets pellet pour the shot into the shot bottle. Take off the funnel. Make sure that the lid that the cap is put back in the shot bottle. I'm going to be doing four kinds of shells, of hulls. Uh, this is the starter crimp. The starter crimp, uh, one of the shells has eight crimp folds and the other three have six. I'll start with the six crimp folds. Put the simp scrimp fold starter in the crimp position, starter crimp position. Right. I have an auto feed uh, prime, primer box system, which doesn't really work for me yet. I'm going to set it up and put some shot, put some uh, primers in it. This spring comes out. A lot of times, the spring, put the spring back in.
one box of primer has a hundred primers uh, two parts to this first I'm going to take the box and pull the primer plastic box onto the primer pan nice way to put these primers in pull the handle down and lift up the primer box which should feed the primers into the box onto the primer pan without much trouble There's the primers all set on the primer pan. Notice that one did get turned over. I'll take that out. Another one that gets has turned sideways. I'll leave that for now. Now go ahead and set this up. I'm gonna fix that primer that's turned over. And uh, there's another one that I turned over. And primers are set. And put the lid on. Uh, put a rubber band around the primer lid because this lid comes off sometimes and moves around. I cannot get the auto the auto loader for the primer to work because the spring keeps popping out even when the spring is and it's working this device does not pull back and go forward like it's supposed to so I just put the bar in front of the primers to be flat push it up and pull it back down manually when I need to drop a primer. All right, so I'm gonna put the primers in. The bar in the front of the primers is square so that when the primers drop, they drop uh, pretty well square. There's always one or two primers that don't drop quite correctly so I have to take those and move them so that they're correct. Get rid of a couple of these primers that didn't drop in, in the box. Get them all in the box. Put the lid on. Use a rubber band and keep the lid tight. Today I'm going to be loading four different kinds of shells. Federal F2 Mac, Monarch, and Fiochis. Most of these have already been reloaded once, so this is their second time through reloading, which seems to work okay. Uh, 
I'm going to move the machine over to the side. I'm doing one ounce, so I've already set up the bar for doing one ounce. And I have a mech bushing in it that's supposed to drop approximately 22 grains of powder. I'm going to be using CB6100, which is a wad that is designed for straight hauled one ounce loads. I put the wad in a separate box, so they're in each. The mech bushings are not very precise on the weight. There's a table that shows how many grains are supposed to drop for the high gun powder with a specific bushing. A 21 or 22 mech would give me approximately approximate number of grains for this, which is supposed to be 21. All right. All the next stages happen down at the base. I take a sh take a shell. For example, this is a BMP shell goes into the resizer pull down on the resizer that pops the previous uh, used primer down into a box underneath the thing at this is the point where I move the handle up to get a primer pull it down and then a primer is put into the reprimer station the primer has been taken out the this is resized push the put the uh, hole on the hole pull down the primer gets set into into the hull. I'm going to weigh the first one and several after to make sure that the right amount of powder is dropping. So this is a small Hornady scale. It's zeroed. Put the shell in the shot column. Pull the shot column down. Move the lever to the left. The shot drops down the shot tube into the shotgun shell. I take this one out and put it on the hole and it reads 22.9. The load for this is 22.1, so that's sufficient. When I take the a shell out to weigh it, I have to make sure that this uh, mesh uh, uh, wad guide is back in place. I put a wad on, pull the wad down into the shell, push the bar to the right. The shot falls down the shot column. Pick it up. I now have shot and wad and powder and primer in this shotgun shell. This is the step for the crimp. <clears throat> the crimper has two steps. The first step is to take 
the old crimp and form it. This is called the starter crimp. It forms a crimp in the uh, previous. Notice that I've got the crimp starter that's set up for six folds. Pull it down. This sets the crimp. Pull the final crimp punch down. And there's the crimp. Uh, it's a decent crimp with a small crimp roll around the edge. I have a small tray that takes 50 of these shells. It helps me keep track and I put them in and it uh, organizes the shells during this process. Mm. All right, so now I'm gonna do one completely all the way into the resizer. Pull uh, a primer down into the primer, reprimer, do the priming, get the shell in the shot column, get the shot, put the wad in, pull the shot down. Free print. Test the shell to make sure that uh, that it's got a solid, everything solid. All right. There we go. I'll just continue to do that. I plan on doing. These are test shells. I'm testing the one ounce load uh, for high gun with these uh, special straight hull one ounce wads. I'm gonna do nine of each to have 36 total and I'll shoot them on the range for testing. The, compo or the components of a shotgun shell are the hole, which is the outside, and the primer. The primer is used when the, when the trigger punch hits a primer, it explodes. Third, the sh powder goes on top of the primer. When the primer explodes, the powder turns on fire and causes a large pressure inside. A wad is placed on top of the powder. The wad keeps the powder contained in the bottom and the top part of the wad holds the shot. In the principle, the shot does not touch the edge of the shell, but the wad. When the, when the primer explodes, the powder fires the wad is pushed out and the, carries the shot out of the shell onto the field. The last part is the shot, which goes into the top part of the wad. Finally, the top of the shell is crimped to keep the shot, primer, wad, powder um, intact. All right. We're taking out the old primer. We're dropping a primer from our primer reloading station. We put in a new primer. Now we have a brand new primer in the shell. We put it in the shot and powder station. 
Now we have a load of shot down in the bottom of the shell, uh, excuse me, a load of powder in the bottom of the shell. We take the wad and the wad goes on top of the powder and into the shell. And we put the shot on top of the wad and now we have the shot which which is supposed to come up to that fold and doesn't quite come up because of this powder the starter crimp forms the folds of the crimp and the punch crimp pushes the crimp down into the shell Occasionally, I have a bad crimp. When I have one of those, I do not throw the shell out because it will probably shoot, but I don't want to load that again. So, you put an X on the shell casing, and the next time I go to use that shell, um, I won't use it. I'll discard it. I'm now going to use the federal shells. The federal shells are made in the U are, are manufactured in the U.S. The Europe the other shells I'm using are European, and I think most of the European shell have six folds in the crimp. The American shells have eight folds in the crimp. So I have an eight-fold crimp, and I need to put the eight-fold crimp on. Um, so that the crimps will work correctly. When I'm finished, I have a stack of shells. There's uh, 36 here uh, because I'm testing shells and I didn't want to fill up uh, two whole boxes. These these sets of shells are Monarch, these are BNP, these are FIOC, and these are Federal. The Federal shells have only been shot once in commer commercial uh, commercially. The other shells I've reloaded once. When I reload them, and I and I'm going to shoot them a second time, I put a mark on the shell that indicates that this has been reloaded that this is a shell that's been reloaded once and now has a load in it a second load so all of these are going to get marked this one that has the two marks on it is one that's going to be thrown out because of the crimp so i put the mark on all of them later if i reload them a second time third time i will put another mark and i'll have two Eventually, they won't be able to be reloaded because the crimp uh, will be too brittle, the plastic uh, shell will crack, and so on. And that one accidentally got marked as one, two, one, 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 one. The next step is to box the shells. I have a handy little container here that will put 25, where I can put 25 shells in. Once the shells are in a container, I could use a used shotgun box However, I have these uh, clear plastic boxes that will fit uh, 25 shells. I use these because they're see-through and I can see what the shells are. And also because the lid is more portable uh, than the shells 
uh, than the boxes that all right so I'm gonna when I eventually shoot these I'll know what they are by the type I'll put them in I take five the bottom of the shells are laid alternately so the shells fit in All right, that's 25 shells, five rows of five, alternating directions. Take the box, put the box over the top of the shell holder. Turn it upside down. Pull it out, voila. Put the lid on. So I will mark this lid. I'll tell the date, the type of powder, the weight of the load, um, the mech bushy number and then any special uh, indication like the fact that I'm trying uh, different shells. One of the reasons that I'm trying out these different shells is I have probably 2,000 empty hulls, uh, probably six or 700 Federals and the others are distributed among the Monarch, BNP, and Fiocchi. I'm trying different loads because I really like the one and a half ounce uh, BNP load. It shoots about 1300 feet per second. And the one and a half ounce high gun powder load seems to mimic that load the best however there have been some issues with the high gun powder because it has higher density so i've had to use one ounce wads for one and one half ounce shot all of these were done with one ounce of shot and one ounce wads the information about how to put these together comes online. The powder company has a site where it gives the weight of the shot, the type of primer, the type of hull, the powder you're using. Um, I think that might be all. And then it will give you a formula for how much of that powder to use to make that shot. So. These are all one out shot. The Hog Hodgkin site had uh, formulas for the Monarch shells and for the Federal shells, the uh, BNP shells and the Fiocchi shells, shells are very similar in construction, design and origin. So we use the same for them. All right, there are the finished boxes of shells. This box has two different uh, types of shells, loadings in it, experimental. And this box has the one out shells that I just loaded. Now that I'm finished, I need to take down the uh, Matt, uh, the first thing we do 
is to move the bottles over, make sure that they have their cap. And unscrew the bottle from the machine. The powder gets put back into the powder jar. Uh, need to be very careful not to mix powders, and I'm using two different kinds of powders, high gun and tight wad, so I always want to put it back in the powder jar. Some people leave their shot in their shot bottle is fine to do. I uh, prefer to put it back into the shot bag. Uh, typically I use a funnel for this, especially if I have a lot of shot. But today, I simply take the shot bottle open the bag this bag has been uh, all the thread has been taken out and I can pour the shot uh, directly back into the shot bag and this is a good place where you have shot spills so be careful I twist the top of the bag and put a clamp on it and that will keep the bag intact with so the shot won't spill I use a silicone cloth to wipe off actually I take the old shot primers out Shot primers here. And here. And here. I have a box uh, back at my shelf where I store all the old uh, bad uh, used, used equipment. I will take those and store them in the used equipment uh, location. Put the lids on the bottles. Empty the remaining uh, primers out of the primer box. By the way, the primers come in rows of 10. I put four rows in there. I have 36 primers. That means I've got four left over. Um, use a silicone cloth to clean out, to wipe the primer tray. It keeps the primer, the silicon makes the primers flow smoothly. Tray back on, rubber band. If I haven't done much spill, then I'll just wipe this off with a cloth. If I've done a lot of spill, either shot or powder, I use a shop vac. Uh, to wipe it off, to blow it off, but I did not do many shells and I didn't do many spills. All right, mostly clean.
Um, I'm going to tip this over in a shot or primers that are left will go down to the end and I will remove those keep the primers I only had like four pieces of shot a bad shot so I'll also put that in the box take off the Uh, crimp starter crimp store them and then I put away all the tools back into their locations and then we're done